Welcome to True Central, fam. Today you'll get the choice to stay oblivious to the real or take the completely legitimate and totally not made up pharmaceutical, the red pill. Ready to get woke? Well, true seekers, hold on to your white guild and hop aboard our Black Lives Matter sponsored spaceship. Piloted by Captain Linda, Islam didn't do nothing Sarsour, and her first mate, Tariq, Samurai's was Black Nasheed. Why? Because you're an ignorant, systemically racist culture thief and our good shepherds are woke as fuck. My love for my people is never going to end till the day that I'm not on this earth anymore. So I think I've only reali realized that recently and understanding this idea of radical love that I never thought about before. The only unarmed people getting shot just happen to be black. So either we have a big, long coincidence or we have a system of white supremacy. See? Woke. If you, like me, are not wanting to be left behind, mired in the lies and half-truths of the mundane world, then these are the people with the authority to set you straight. I'm talking Alex Jones level Super Saiyan God mode transcendental shit. So who is Linda Sarsour? Well, besides being a Palestinian American and co-chair of the 2017 Women's March, she is also a professional white knight for the religion of Islam. I am not an Islamic scholar, nor am I a theologian. I am an American Muslim activist. So that's Linda, the face of super liberal, absurdly intersectional, LGBTQ supporting ultra feminist Islam. I know. I thought that was all a contradiction as well, because I wasn't woke enough. Well, perhaps she will enlighten us as to the error of our ways. Our religion is a progressive one. It does not need for us to help it become progressive. We are not looking for a moderate Islam because Islam is already a moderate religion. Yes, it is, sisters and brothers. Islam is a religion of peace. But what is more important about Islam is that it is a religion of justice. Never mind all the things in the Quran that disagree with this notion. Muhammad was wise and egalitarian, the embodiment of peace on earth. If you read the Quran and it says something that makes you think otherwise, then clearly you don't understand. Our Prophet ﷺ, for me, was a human rights activist. He was a racial justice activist. He was the first feminist. Nope. No, he wasn't. I've heard the same liberal reinterpretation of biblical scripture too, and at least with the New Testament, it doesn't have to do as many backflips. But the Quran clearly defines a double standard for how women are to behave and how men are to carry themselves. How is it empowering for women when they are directed on what to wear? How feminist and progressive is it when marriage means that a woman should never deny sex to her husband? Not to mention the rules regarding inheritance and the diminished capacity of women in serving as witnesses for court proceedings. I call bullshit. But apparently Islam did invent Black Lives Matter. Islam is the originator of Black Lives Matter. We are the originators of this concept because black life always mattered in Islam. Makes you wonder if that's why some adherents of both belief systems think it's okay to use violence to achieve their goals. My problem with Linda, well, one of them, is that she fails to see Islam as having any kind of inherent problems with its ideology or doctrine. Despite the clear shortcomings of the Quran, the Hadith, the ways they are used, often cruelly, to support theological regimes that deny basic human rights, or the way some people of this faith have committed acts of terror and martyrdom, all in the name of Allah. She thinks Islam is perfect the way it is, without need for progress or change. Sisters and brothers, our job as Muslims is not to change what Islam is to make people feel comfortable, sisters and brothers. That kind of dogmatic acceptance of infallibility is worrying. Muhammad was an illiterate despot, and the Holy Quran is regurgitated nonsense. Surahs taken from the recollections of his followers, most of which were just plagiarized stories from the older Abrahamic religions. We, sisters and brothers, have nothing to be ashamed about. We have nothing to apologize for. We follow a beautiful religion. Much of Islam, as a religion, is trash. Many of its moral laws are trash. The Muslims, as people, are not trash, however. But neither are they an ethnic race. They are a group of believers of a specific religion. A religion that is antithetical in many ways to modern Western values. Even extremely conservative Western values. The people who are honest about these things might understand that of course it's not all Muslims that are the problem. It's a relatively small few. But there are clearly things wrong with the religion, the ideology itself. Just a quick look at majority Muslim countries and their treatment of people in the way of upholding human rights is a pretty quick indication of some of the inadequacies of Islam. Muslim apologists, of the type Sarsour is, 
have to pick and choose the parts of the religion they want to endorse, while constantly virtue signaling that Islam is super peaceful. Believe in whatever religion you want, but don't pretend that it's beyond criticism, or that contrary to the facts, it's inherently peaceful. For more information on how peaceful Islam isn't, watch this older video. Or this one. But now that we've got a taste of sour grapes, let's rinse that out with the refreshing flavor of K-Flex, the melanin-laced energy drink that also goes by the name Tariq Nasheed on Twitter. Wow, them some factually supported, science-approved tweets, Tariq. No surprise that you've been the go-to pro Black Lives Matter guy on multiple news networks. Some have imputed racial motives to the shooting. Among those is radio show host and author Tariq Nasheed. He tweeted this yesterday. So white officer Alan Harupjo shot and killed the black Somali stabbing suspect in Ohio and is being paraded as a hero. That's interesting. Okay. Um, no, I didn't think that the guy was um, um, uh, wrong for what he did. The guy was a hero. The, the comment wasn't, mean to ra wasn't meant to racialize the actual shooting in the event itself. When that happened <sighs> online, there were a lot of people who played the race card, and the minute they found out who the suspect was, they kept talking about black Somalian, black Somalian, then they started talking about Black Lives Matter, then they started talking about Obama, then they racialized right. it. Tariq is a man on a mission to point out that white people are almost always the problem, and he does it on his hard-hitting, truth-dealing podcast. White supremacists who are race soldiers, because that's what we have to look at them as, they can start slaughtering us without even having a defense at this point. And it's, it's a weekly thing now that black people are just getting, unarmed black people are getting slaughtered by these race soldiers, and we're going to have to start using the term, just like our brother Neely Fuller said, th these people are race soldiers. Race soldiers? Was there a draft? Oh shit, here we go! It's on! Race war! Race war! Race war! Race war's on, everybody! It's going down! Shit is going down! Not only is the white man trying to kill the black man now, but the history of the black man has been stolen. By apparently everyone. At least according to the Hidden Colors 2 documentary Tyreek made. One thing that we could say about African peoples is that we left evidence of ourselves all over this planet. And that's the problem with European scientists. The deeper they dig, the blacker the planet gets. And what we have been made to see now is this infusion of European, uh, I guess, philosophies about what the past was, and no one else on TV is actually giving us evidence of what we were, who we were, but Europeans. Every person has the right to know their ancestral history. Every person, no matter where they are in the world. Most of world history, 90% of world history is African history. And even that 10% Africa is extraordinarily involved in making it what it is. You won't find a painting, you won't find a statue, you won't find a monument anywhere prior to 1500 that isn't Africoid in some way, shape, or form. The European writer by the name of Gerald Massey said in one of his books that Stonehenge was built by an African man named Morian. Tariq has taken a fistful of red pills. He knows the truth about African origins of all culture and technology. Everything important was created by people with dark skin tones, and that is important for reasons of wokeness. Side note, if you prescribe to the modern understanding of biodiversity by means of the evolutionary process, then all humans came from Africa. Europeans, Asians, and everyone else. So yeah, Africa made it possible. We was all Kangs. Because we're being terrorized at this time and in, in juncture here in America as Melanoid people. We're literally being terrorized. This is like some Nazi Germany. Way beyond that, though. It's, it's deeper than that. Melanoids? Because melanin? Mind blown. But what is melanin? You may not be asking, because most people have a fair understanding of it. Well, this is what Tariq's documentary says. Melanin is a neurochemical that is produced in part through the pituitary and the pineal gland. They both play a central role in the production of melanin, 
which is ultimately responsible for the color that we have in our skin. Now, historically, it had always been thought that melanin played a significant role in the intellectual propensity of African people. For example, when you study some of the Greek writings on melanin or the color of Africans, many of the Greek philosophers believed that that melanin played some sort of a role in how Africans had been able to create and develop some of the sciences that they had come to be known for. So melanin was always considered an intellectual sort of a chemical. Hmm, wrong. Just for the record, all humans have melanin. There are different types of melanin, and these appear in different quantities and certain ethnicities. But all people have some form of melanin. It dictates hair color, eye color, and skin color, as well as being responsible for the skin tanning phenomenon that protects people from harmful UV rays. The melanin you seem to think is the only one is eumelanin, and it is the one that is responsible for the darker skin tones in animals, and is common in that one particular bipedal hairless ape you know, humans, but mostly in humans that have stayed until more recently in or around equatorial parts of Earth, as a skin and eye protection measure supported by natural selection as a means to counteract the higher exposure to direct sunlight. Eumelanin in the skin of the migrant European and Asiatic peoples was less important, so its appearance in those populations was less favored by selection pressures. But that shit is everywhere. You don't have a monopoly on melanin, and it doesn't make you a superhuman. Also, Tariq has seen the dangers of being moist. If you don't know what moist is, then get woke. And with a lot of dudes, he might be straight, he might be gay, but what we do know, he's moist. And that's what I mean by moist. Don't be in the middle. If you're going to be one, be one or the other. All this moist, metrosexual bullshit that's going on, Choose a side and get up in there. I'm sick of all this little androgynous bullshit that's going on with the dudes out here, especially in the black community, man. Moistness is the real danger. Moist terrorists driven by their moist agenda, and they are blowing up. Uh, I can't. This guy is insane. I find it amusing that most claims of being so woke are often accompanied by outright denial of empirical data. Not that strict empiricism proves or disproves any kind of a priori truth, but denial of empiricism, except when conveniently cherry-picked to support a preferred idea, is disingenuous. It's confirmation bias, and it puts the assertions of truth by these woke-ass people in the realm of theology. Their truth is just that, their subjective and highly dubious view of what truth is, often quite divorced from our commonly observed reality. And that sounds like a religion to me. Always searching for some deeper, transcendental truth, which I think is what being woke is really referencing, is an age-old endeavor of students of metaphysics and philosophy. And it's not really applicable the way most of these victimhood-obsessed political activists use it. To be sure, these truthers are not alone. Flat earthers think they are woke to the truth, as do people that believe in the Mandela effect. But they aren't trying to incite a race war like Tariq or blame everybody but Islam for ISIS like Linda. We have to challenge the narrative that we somehow are associated or responsible for terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. We must stand and speak truth to power that the very foreign policies implemented by our governments have created the vacuums for groups like ISIS. To be clear, you can take any color pill you want. Just don't think that you're in on the universe's secrets and no longer have to support your shit opinions with actual evidence. The evidence matters. It always matters. Fuck being woke. I'm going back to bed, where shit makes sense. Stay scientific, friends. Wash your ass, you got to wash your ass, you got to wash your ass, wash, wash your ass, you got to wash your ass, you got to wash your ass, wash, wash it, wash, wash it. I say you.